So, in this episode of the Night Vision Show, we're going to be talking about drones, uh, and in particular, thermal drones. And it's something that we have recently only started to uh, get into in a, in a bigger way at Scott Country. These are probably one of the best, most affordable drones out there. It's, a, it's an Autel Evo 2 version 3. Uh, this is the Enterprise model. I'll, I'll go into a bit more of that in detail in a second. So this has a 640 by 512 sensor thermal camera on the front along with a normal, I think it's a 4K uh, optical camera built in as well on the gimbal here. Uh, the optical camera has a 16x zoom as does the thermal. So we'll just go through a few of the, the, the specifications of it so far. Uh, 42 minutes run time on a single battery and a single charge. Uh, it comes in the box there with three batteries. It has a nine mile radius uh, from, from where you're flying, nine mile range. Um, this one in particular, the Enterprise models, comes with some different attachments. It's got lights that you can attach on the front here. It's got a speaker that you can attach on the front. Um, it's a semi-professional, if not professional, drone. Uh, uses for this, lots and lots and lots of different uses. Um, from deer management through to search and rescue, um, for security reasons, loads of different... I think you could realistically use this, you could find some excuse to use this for, for any application that you have. I've been using it for the last few weeks, mainly for deer management, deer surveys, to try and find out what uh, what deer's on the ground, uh, what locations they're at. This, this can get to places that, that we just can't physically get to uh, on time. The drone itself, uh, it's so easy to fly. There, there's really nothing complicated about it. To deploy the drone, it realistically, it folds up into something that's very, very small, very, very compact. As you can see from that, the controller for this one, we'll go into a wee bit more detail on this in a second. It comes with its own controller, with its own built-in screen, so you don't actually have to use an iPhone or anything like that for it. There's other applications that this is very good for. Security, for example, if you own a large estate, a large piece of ground that you don't want people there, you don't know if people are there or not, within one minute you can have this in the air. You can fly it directly using a the thermal camera. You can see exactly where the people are that, that you want to interview or want to see what they're doing. You've got the speaker on there, you can fly this uh, you know, a few hundred feet away from them, ask them to leave the property. That's just one of the many applications that it has. Search and rescue, for example, the thermal camera side of this, as I say, it's a 640-512, it's 30 frames per second. You could fly this out to somebody on the side of a mountain who's lost, who's injured, fly it above them with the speaker, communicate with them, tell them, listen, we've found you, help's on its way, don't move, whatever the message is, and it, and it can all be done within seconds. Um, the price on this particular one is just slightly over £5,000. It's the Enterprise model, as I say, with the different bits and pieces with it. There is a slightly cheaper model that doesn't come with the different attachments, but I must admit it's probably one of the easiest things that I've ever used, straight out of the box. You don't have to do too much with it, and it's, it's in the air. So the controller itself, as you can see here, it's it's a massive screen. It's not one of the ones that you put the, the, the iPhone on top of, which I think is pretty cool. Um, this is the the camera just set up in the office here at the moment. Lots of different functions here, so we can we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can adjust the gimbal up and down. Obviously we can record here. Whenever we hit this button here, 
it gives us the option of thermal. Okay, so there's the thermal camera. In the bottom in here, we can go with all the different color pots. So we've got black hot, rainbow. There's lots of different, uh, a lot more color pots than there is in your standard thermal, and it's all just down to whatever, uh, whatever kind of works for yourself. Loads of different other settings involved here as well. So what we have here is we can mix and match. So you can see here we've got the outline of the the color, and then in the center here we've got the thermal. But we can also adjust this so that we can tone down the thermal to almost have it integrated that you don't know that it's there. Or we can have it up so that you're not really losing the sight picture of the overall camera, especially really handy during the day. Uh, we've got the temperature measuring here, which gives you spot temperatures. So if you were doing a survey, for example, on a building, uh, and you needed to know certain temperatures of different things that let you do all that. So here we have the drone with the, uh, the lights on. As you can see, it's very, very bright. You know, that's probably about 170, 180 feet above uh, above ground there. That's it combined with the thermal and the actual torch itself. You have no problems whatsoever on spotting something there in the field. So here we have, just to show you how easy it is to lift the drone how to fly it. We're standing in the middle of a, of a lane in the forest. Just up to a quick check there and make sure everything's okay and, and away you go. It's quite weird because you're always staring at the screen. You never actually look at the drone itself because the image that you get from the drone is far better than any image you would have from your own eye. You can see exactly here now that you're seeing things with the drone uh, from a height in around the backs of trees, you know, down into the middle of the trees. You're just never going to get that image. You're never going to get that, you know, that, that way of seeing into all the nooks and crannies on, on your ground. You know, this is probably coming down from about 200 feet. Uh, you can see the Jeep there. You can make out the, the guy standing around the Jeep. You know, probably 200 feet, you're probably hearing the drone from about there on above that. It's pretty silent. So here we have a bit of forestry that I manage. Uh, have a wee look around here to make sure there's... See if there is anything kicking about. You can see the, the river there in a slightly different colour, obviously, because... It's not that the river is warm, it's that it's slightly different temperature to the rest of the ground. The rest of the ground been been frozen, that's why the, the river is showing up the way it is. You can actually see here, away in the distance, you can actually see a couple of animals out there away in the distance. Those are actually deer that we had spotted earlier that morning uh, that I knew were there. But this was a different part that we were having a wee recce around. You know, that's, that's 30 or 40 seconds there to get to that point uh, where it would have taken us maybe half an hour, 40 minutes to hike into there. This is a, a bit of clear fell, probably in around about 150, 160 feet. Uh, the drone's just on its way home to us at this point. You can see there that the image quality of the optical camera is, it really is spectacular. So here we have, you can you just can't see it as yet, but we'll zoom in here now. And there he is. That's a stag that uh, that we have on the ground there. I knew he was in around those small trees. The, the good thing about this drone as well, those really small trees on, on the left there now, you can't see into them from anywhere uh, apart from above. You can't see them from the sides, even down below. And that the deer really love, as you can see here, this this stag's just on the edge of them, uh, and he really loves being around those uh, 
those small trees, which are impossible to see. You know, those trees could hold 15, 20 deer and you would never see where they were. Again here, a quick scan over the top. Anything there that's, that's you know, there's, there's three people there with, with the Jeep. You know, that was quite difficult to see unless you had thermal on. The thermal just emphasizes the image straight away and you've no questions whatsoever. You can see exactly what that is. I really think it's fantastic with this drone, the way that you can overlay the thermal image so you're, you're still getting the effect of the optical side of it. But the enhanced thermal image really draws your eye to something quickly if there's something there. Whereas if it was all optical, you might just miss it. Again, search and rescue. If that was somebody that was in distress, we would have the speaker on there. We'd be able to talk to them. So there we have a bit of footage there that we've went through. You saw a few deer there. <laughs> different heights, different thermals, different sizes. You know, some people, some people frown upon technology and they, they look at this and they say, you know, it's cheating. Um, and, and I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, oh, you know, drones are cheating and you shouldn't, you shouldn't use drones for, for, for watching deer and things like that. Certainly, I totally agree. Recreational stalking, it's it's all about stock and it's all about you know your your hobby your sport but what people have to understand is that there's another side to deer management um, and one of the, the 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 big things is that there are certain places that deer really really have to be managed properly uh, and in my opinion this machine this tool um, is changing technology that now is helping to do you know a job. That was going to take a lot more man hours before you know for, for example a, a keeper now can go to the middle of his estate drop this out of the out of the jeep fly it around the estate count how many deer that he has in certain areas know that he has to cull certain deer in certain areas find you know wounded deer find find calves find, you know the, the the potential of something like this as a tool in the right hands um, in my opinion, is is worth its weight in gold. You know the, the the time and effort that you would spend climbing the side of a mountain to get a look down into a valley to see if there's something there, uh, when this in thirty seconds can be there. You know, from the deer the deer management point of view, in my, in my opinion, I think it's a no brainer. You know, the same people also have said to me, you know, that the thermal imaging, handheld thermal imaging, is cheating as well. You know, if you wanted to go back, and I, I say this all the time, if you want to go back to, you know, when the telescopic sight came out, I'm sure it was cheating. When 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 guns came out and they used to use bow and arrows, I'm sure it was cheating. So what I'm trying to say here is technology evolves and it's how we use it to its advantage to help to do a job uh, and to minimise to minimize ours and, and to make the job more productive. So that, that's my take on, on the drones. Um, I think it's a wonderful piece of kit. I don't think it's too badly priced, if I'm honest. Uh, there's other different thermal imagers, handheld thermal imagers out there that are, are in around the same kind of money. Um, so take a look at these. They're on our website. They're on Autel. We've got a few different ones there. You can see them all at www.scottcountry.co.uk. Uh, and if you have any questions, drop a comment here in the box. Um, send us an email. Give us a call. We're more than happy to, to, to let you see this.